Hi, I'm Eric Slend, the process engineer for Steelscape's Kalama Washington Paint Line. And I'm Mike Bonner, the Vice President of Engineering for St. Clair Systems. We are very excited to be here today and to have the opportunity to share with you our experiences with continuous improvement, namely the collaborative implementation of the St. Clair Paint Temperature Control System on both of Steelscape's Kalama and Rancho Cucamonga paint lines. The impact of these installations was huge for both facilities and a quantum leap forward for Steelscape's paint processes. Here's the Kalama plant. It's nestled in a rural area along the shore of the Columbia River in the southwest corner of Washington State. This runs in stark contrast to the setting of the Rancho Cucamonga plant, which sits in a predominantly urban area 40 miles due east of Los Angeles. The Kalama facility has a pickle line, a cold mill, a metallic coating line, and a five-head paint line. It also has four seasons. Because of our location, we get our share of snow in the winter and heat in the summer. Being 40 miles east of LA, this plant sits basically on the edge of the Palm Desert. Like most desert climates, it has one season, hot. But that being said, it also gets cool at night. The layout of the Kalama paint line is pretty traditional, and you're all familiar with them. The main difference between Kalama and Rancho is that Kalama has a U-coater and so has two top finish heads, a bottom finish head, and two prime heads, top and bottom. Rancho, on the other hand, has two S-coaters, so they have only four heads, top and bottom finish and top and bottom prime. But again, the fundamentals are the same. So let's focus for a minute on the issues at the Kalama line that drove us to look at temperature control. At the time, half our paint was stored in a heated warehouse, but the other half was stored outdoors. And in the Pacific Northwest, where temperatures ranged from 20 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, that had paint coming to our coder line at 40 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And that can be a process problem. In fact, the temperature-based viscosity variations created significant modifications to our standard setups. Then, to make matters worse, the paint heated up during the runs due to friction. The operators were constantly getting called for up a tenth, down a tenth adjustments. Once we finally got it adjusted, the addition of fresh paint created a temperature shock and a viscosity shift, and we were right back to making adjustments again. And Rancho was faced with similar issues. The vastly different climate and different layout required very different operating parameters. Though their seasonal temperature variations were smaller, their issues with process heating and mid-run adjustments were identical. And this brings us to the goals set down for this project. Eric? The initial project goals were simple. Number one, ensure the paint temperature could be controlled to reduce viscosity variation. And when we said control, we knew that it would be critical to be able to both heat and cool if we were going to be able to maintain our tight paint temperature targets over our wide ambient temperature range. Number two, minimize the reducing solvents we were adding to our paints, especially in cold weather. And finally, improve the consistency and repeatability of the process to increase our first pass yield. But as we got into it, we realized that there were other important factors to be considered as well. Color change time is important so we needed to be able to get the paint to temperature quickly. But that being said, it was also important not to damage our more delicate paint formulations. Speed of color change also meant that the system had to clean up quickly and easily. The operators were adamant that it had to be easy to use and to work with our recipeing system, it would have to interface readily with our existing line controls. It would also need to require minimal maintenance, downtime, and of course, floor space is always at a premium. So we started working together in 2006. In October, we provided a proposal, which was well received. So in November, we kicked things off. To prove that this was going to work, we brought in our single station demo system and set it up. Because of the vast differences between the two plants, we had to prove it would perform well in both facilities, and that took a few weeks. Fortunately, we were successful in both trials, and the results were presented to management during the last week of December. And the results must have been pretty good, because the PO was issued on the 19th of January. Then we at SCS had to build and deliver the equipment, 
and the Kalama and Rancho teams had to get their facilities ready for the install. We started on April 1st at Kalama, and by the 8th of May, both facilities were up and running. Now I love these installs. Here you can see that the Kalama team actually extended the landing on the staircase to make room for the equipment adjacent to the oven, but not protruding into the aisleway, with a four-station prime top coater TCU visible through the coater booth window. You can also see the chilled water piping heading up to the single station TCU for the back coater upstairs. And the heat exchangers were kept close to the point of application, which is of key importance to proper system performance. As for Rancho, a different location, a different set of requirements, and a different choice of equipment. Here, two duels, one for prime upstairs and one for finished coat downstairs, but in the end, performing the same function. And this configuration doesn't even exist anymore. But at the time, locating the heat exchangers on the shelf adjacent to the coder kept them close to the point of application, but out of the way of the operators. And since it never rains in Southern California, we put the chiller outside. Now, in all fairness, they did come back afterwards and add an overhang to protect it. Another important note, this may look familiar. Though they have only four heads to cool, the warmer climate increased the cooling loads and we ended up with the same chiller used in the Kalama system. Though the project was aggressively budgeted with no contingency, we completed it on time and came in at just 99.6% of the total approved budget. Sometimes you just get lucky. So, flash forward seven months and the question is, did this project meet the goals and objectives set forth at the outset? So let's review those project goals again. Number one, ensure that paint temperature can be controlled at a targeted value on each coater to reduce viscosity variation. Secondly, reduce the quantity of petroleum solvents added to our paints by a minimum of 50%. And finally, improve the consistency and repeatability of the painting process to increase the finish quality and first pass yield. And let's start with the objective on which the payback was based, solvent savings. And as we can see here, we exceeded the 50% reduction goal by more than 20%. During our first seven months of operation, we saw that we could heat a drum of paint from 65 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit in less than four minutes and maintain it at that desired set point. As we just showed, our reducing solvent usage decreased 61% and as a result, we saw a 75% reduction in product downgrades due to solvent-related defects, blisters, solvent pop, etc. Furthermore, we were able to turn off the paint warehouse heater system. We also saw the DFT variation across the strip reduced, and the finished quality of the strip, gloss, appearance, etc. showed significant improvement. This improved film control resulted in a direct decrease in paint consumption, which virtually eliminated paint shortages. We even saw an improvement in environmental compliance, but more about that later. So yes, we did meet our goals and objectives for this project. Why? Well, to begin with, the St. Clair team was extremely well organized and working with our implementation teams, created a customized program to ensure success with minimal equipment downtime. In fact, Ron Hurst, paint area manager at Rancho Cucamonga said, this was the easiest capital project implementation that we've ever done. But the real test of any project designed to create change in an organization is whether or not the change stands the test of time. So let's flash forward seven years and see how we're doing. Over the last seven years, the goals and objectives set forth for the temperature control system have remained intact, but the marketplace has changed significantly. The downturn of 2008 to 2009 has driven smaller batch sizes and shorter lead times as customers attempt to manage their costs through tighter inventory control. Furthermore, we've seen a major consolidation across the industry. Though there are fewer coating companies today, there remains excess capacity, and folks are competing harder than ever before. This creates increased price pressure at a time when the smaller lot sizes tend to push costs higher. The temperature control system has played a key role in our ability to adapt to these changes. 
is provided the ability to use temperature as a tool, another control parameter like speed and pressure that can be manipulated to assure the predictable performance of the line. And we've continued to refine our use of that tool. Here we can see that we've continued to drive down our percent solvent usage per gallon of paint. Remember that the bottom of the seven month graph was cut off at 3%. But it's easier to see if we look at it in annual terms. Here we can see that the reduction is now approaching 80%. This is important as reducing solvents have continued to increase in price. Take isoferone for instance. In 2007 it was $11.48 a gallon. Today is $13.80 a gallon, an increase in excess of 20%. It is even worse for more common solvents like SC100. In 2007, it was $4.45 a gallon. Today is $6.80 a gallon, an increase of nearly 53%. Our other metrics have improved too. So this reduction in solvent addition has also reduced our LALs by 33% on the average, and this has allowed us to increase our line speed on many products. In addition, the 95% reduction in solvent-related defects and 75% reduction in paint shortages have become the new norms by which we judge our paint operation. The control of paint temperature really just resulted in stable viscosity, both during a run and from run to run. It helped us to eliminate mid-run adjustments and allowed us to implement better recipe control procedures, which has shortened our setups. Moreover, after seven years of use, the system still requires only replacement of water filters every six months and chemical addition to the water system. It remains virtually maintenance free. The system is easy to use and the reduction in solvent consumption has reduced our paint line associates handling of and exposure to solvents. And they like that. In fact, they have deemed the St. Clair paint temperature control equipment to be an integral part of the painting process. Oh, and that heated paint storage room? It's now a locker area where the operators can store their things right next to the line. In addition to reducing our operators' exposure to potentially dangerous chemicals, the environmental impact of this system has been very real for us. On August 22, 2007, Steelscape joined the National Partnership for Environmental Priorities pledging to reduce its naphthalene usage by a minimum of 30%. At the time, the Kalama painting operation was using 89,750 pounds of naphthalene per year, and therefore we were committing to reducing that amount by about 27,000 pounds per year. The solvent reductions realized through the implementation of the temperature control system actually resulted in an 80% reduction of naphthalene usage a savings of nearly 72,000 pounds per year. As a result, in April 2011, Clama won the coveted EPA National Partnership Environmental Award. And this looks pretty good hanging on our wall, too. So how did we do it? We did it together. So I'll let Mike describe the implementation process. Thanks, Eric. As we've already described, we used a structural methodology based on our joint ability to measure the variables that needed to be controlled, analyze that data, and plan a course of action to address the deficiencies, communicate effectively the need to the team, and continuously improve, which is a forte of Steelscapes. We started with SCS's proprietary PAC system and tools to identify the variations in the thermal profile of the Steelscape systems. Then, we made the changes necessary to eliminate those variations. Here, we can see the variation from edge to edge, which is the vertical space between the traces. We can also see the increase in temperature over time, which results in variation from head to tail. This shows the edge to edge variations, which we call the thermal profile, in an easier to analyze format. We know that variations in temperature will affect the coating viscosity and therefore, of course, the resulting film build. We've learned that the goal is to stabilize the viscosity of the coating material at the point of use, which is actually the half-inch thick area 
directly adjacent to the face of the pickup roller. This is actually the point of use for a coil coating operation, and it can be in the pan or in the nib. No other material temperature in the system matters to the stability of the coating process. So we develop methods for eliminating the edge-to-edge -edge variations. Here we can see that the profile is aligned. The vertical space, the variations, have been eliminated. Unfortunately, this still shows variation over time, from head to tail, approaching nearly 14 degrees Fahrenheit per hour. This proves that just aligning the profile won't address the problem. Temperature control is required. But this shows how the correction of the thermal profile eliminates the edge-to-edge -edge film variation. And thus, the combination of thermal profile correction with temperature control results in a process with no variation in film build from edge-to-edge -edge or head-to-tail, at least due to temperature variations. This is a process on which continuous improvement efforts can be focused in other areas. The plan was carefully documented using standard tools, which made it easier to communicate and for everyone to understand their role in the success of the project. Again, what we did was to make temperature a tool. What Steelscape has done with that tool is truly impressive. The bottom line is that you can change the world around you if you just have the courage to go after it. And sometimes you even get recognized for your efforts. So I'm Eric Slynn saying thank you for joining us this afternoon. And I'm Mike Bonner. And that's all, folks.